Hey YouTube, this is TCA Gaming, and so I'm going to do a different video for you guys today. I'm going to show you all of the base set booster box variants that I have. I'm going to at least show you the ones that I have, and I'm going to kind of make you aware that there's probably more of them out there, as well as one of that I know of that I haven't been able to obtain yet. But I'm going to show you what I have. I'm going to explain the differences, and uh, at the same time, you guys get to see you know a lot of original base set booster boxes. Okay, so. If you're wondering, I'm talking about you know base set one. So we're talking about a booster box that looks like this, has that classic yellow and blue on it. You know, you got a well, you've got a couple of those there. I'm not going to go into too much detail on those because um, I'm going to go into detail about every single box uh, that I'm going to show you for the variations in this upcoming video. And the very first one I'm going to talk about is the same as the two you see in the background. It's just your regular base set booster box that you normally find if you're out looking to purchase one. Now this box was in May of 2019 about 2,500 bucks. In 2000 and let me think, 2008 I bought my first base set booster box for $100. The manufacturer's suggested retail price, even back in the day, was $143.96 for the first edition anyways. I've seen some show that it's $124 or something like that. However, uh, an Excel sheet that I got from one of the print production managers actually shows that even in the beginning these were $144, but you could get them for a lot less than that. Uh, like I said, I bought my first one for $100 in 2008, and that would be nine years after the release. These were released in America in 1999. and <clears throat> I didn't really start hardcore collecting until after I graduated from college in 2012 where I figured out I could sell and make a better living selling Pokemon than I could with my teaching degree. So this is the very first variation that we're going to look at. We're not going to go into much backstory on a lot more of them. You can see right here I have it labeled Blue Winged Logos in Multiple Locations. I'm going to kind of explain what that means. So Blue Winged refers to this because... Some of the earlier versions actually have a different color wing on the Charizard. It's a different position. This is kind of that best song CD collection Charizard uh, artwork that you find, and that's from the ja that's a Japanese release. That's where the artwork comes from. But the one that's on the original box has the Charizard kind of like the base set artwork. But he has blue wings right here. You can see that uh, the logos. You can see these white logos on here, almost on every single type of. Pokemon box under Wizards of the Coast, except for a few, and we're going to go through that as well. This Venusaur also has what some people call the X in the background. It's actually got three, but the original prints do not have that X as well, but you can identify all of those by the same Green Wing Charizard, which is, like I said, we'll get to here in a little bit. Now on the bottom, there are multiple locations. You see right here, it's got Made in the USA, but it also has references to UK, Canada, France, European, Italy, and all these different places. And we'll go over what those boxes, um, what boxes that don't have this uh, could potentially have inside. So this is your original box. You've got one. So I'm going to move these off to the side. I'm going to kind of hopefully halfway stack these in the background so you guys can see. Maybe we'll start on the left and then we'll go to the right. Maybe I can get three wide in here. All right, so next up, this one is kind of a variation, kind of not. So it's a blue-winged partial logo. And what I mean by partial logos, like if you look on it, there's basically no Wizards of the Coast logos. I'm talking about this right here on the box, which in general, you want to have that for authentication. Now, this does have one little half partial logo right there. And you can kind of see where another piece of it is in here. But... Uh, the situation going on with this, I kept it as a variation because uh, a lot of times when they got to the end of the roll, um, they didn't have the logos on them. Kind of like if you've ever seen those booster packs that have the red stripe around them, that's at the very end of the roll. So I thought this was pretty cool. It's probably exactly the same in, in contents-wise as this one right here. I remember I bought this one years ago off of, I believe, eBirdman. He was kind of uh, shaken, or it might have been Ed Burns. I it was an Ed something. It was either E Birdman or Ed, and he sold it to me for 500 bucks. At the time, I think the going rate was about 750. And I think he just wanted to get rid of it because he he didn't like the fact that it didn't have the logos on it. But for me, it didn't make sense to counterfeit something like that. And at that point, I'd never seen a sealed counterfeit box. Plus, it also had a little bit of partial logo, and a lot of the box itself was exactly the same. All right, so next up we have 
Blue Winged Single Location 1999-2000 print. This is a, one of the boxes I just picked up right before the spike. I think I got it for about six grand. This was at the time when booster boxes were about $5,000, just the regular and limited. So I thought, you know, this would be good to go ahead and pick up now before the price goes up too much more. You can see there is a tear right here and it does have a ding corner. But the only difference on this one is on the bottom, it just has one location. And in general, that was only done on the green wing uh, boxes, but it did show up occasionally on some European releases for different sets. So that's why this one is, um, I was told, was a 1999-2000 print just for the U.S. side. And I believe he had um, opened up other boxes the guy that I bought off of, off of, and it makes sense to me. I had not seen this box, and either way, if it is not indeed a 1999-2000 print, then it is still a variation because it only has the U.S. on the bottom, but I feel pretty confident that it is indeed a 1999-2000 print. I'll put that one up right there. Stacking it, you guys can't really see at that point, can you? All right, next up we have Made in UK. So there's actually several differences that's going on here and it's kind of a reason uh, why that I'm not entirely sure that the other box is a 1999-2000 print. So first of all, you know, it says made in UK. That's actually what it says here. This is where all the other boxes have said made in the USA. Here it just says made in UK. But there are other differences on this box that can help you determine that it's not like the others. So if you're looking at the very front, some of you already know what's going on. And some of you may have spotted it, some of you may have not yet. But the difference is the logos, the wizard logos are curved. This happened after some of the original prints for the first three sets. And um, you can see right here, they transitioned from the standard square logo to a curved logo. And the booster packs inside should also have curved logos on the back side where you look at that little purple box that's on the booster pack itself. And then if you look in the dates, down here it actually says copyrights 1999-2000, where all of these other boxes we've shown so far are just regular 1999 here. They have square logos. But on the back you can see this was made in the UK, and as far as I know, all boxes that were made in the UK have the, the curved logos and say 1999-2000 in the copyright dates on the outside of the box. Next up we have Made in Australia. Now unlike Jungle and Fossil, this booster box it did have the yellow Pokemon logos. So if you're familiar with what I'm talking about for Jungle and Fossil, to prevent counterfeiting, they actually changed the color to red. However, this one is yellow. This is probably the very first box that they printed in Australia. But as you can see, it actually has the curved logos. And then on the side, it does say 1999, 2000 there. And then the only way you can tell the difference between this and the UK that uh, I know of is right here. It says made in Australia. Now there may be some difference in weight, but for the most part, all these boxes are within a specific range of about typically within one ounce of each other. All right, next up, we are still on blue winged regular boxes. And this next one is a lot tougher to find. So this says Black Triangle Personally Opened. So this box is going to look identical to the Blue Winged Logos Multiple Locations box pretty much in every way other than if you opened up a case like a certain someone I know I did on IG, Mr. Met7. He was able to tell by the outside and the logo patterns, you know, the boxes inside were actually going to be uh, black triangle booster packs. And what I mean by black triangle is I'm going to open this up for you because this is an open box. This is not a sealed box. Referring to this right here, you can see it has black triangles right here. And I'm going to show you here in a minute when I show you another box why that was done. Because it's definitely not aesthetically pleasing. And you would think that something like that would... Uh, either has to be on purpose or if it wasn't it would be scrapped. So this one is an assembled box that I have. So I've got two full boxes, one that I opened myself and one that um, I assembled a long time ago when I didn't think it was possible to get an entire box. So here we have a regular black triangle booster pack. Now right here you can see what they were trying to cover up. These are unlimited booster packs. But if you look at this, they kind of misstamped the black triangle um, over the first edition stamp a little too much. They put it too high. So they had accidentally 
printed a first edition stamp on these unlimited booster packs. Instead of just scrapping the booster packs, I guess it was a large enough run or large enough part of the run that they didn't want to do that and it would be a financial loss. They just printed a black triangle directly over the first edition stamp. So that's really unique. It's kind of a cool piece of history to find behind that. And there are actually some, very few that were released that have the first edition stamp and don't have the black triangle. That's the booster box that I'm missing. So if you know of anyone who has one of those or has a collection of 36 packs that they'd be willing to part with, I would be interested because I would like to add that to my collection personally. I have only ran across one person who had a full box at one time and I could not afford it at the time. All right, so next up we're going to make a little bit of a transition from the blue wings to the green wings. And these have, this box has logos and multiple locations. The reason I'm listing that is because it does become, you know, a factor when you get back, as you go back into the older sets. So if you look at this, some of you can probably tell from the front that the, the printing is a little bit different. It's a little bit darker. It has a, a few different lines that were put on it. But here's the Venus Rodel Summon. It doesn't have that X in the background. The Blastoise itself, uh, I believe he has a little, it's a little bit different too. It's a little bit more white in the back. Um, but here's the big one. You know, this is what everyone goes for. It's the green winged Charizard. And this has that classic base set artwork from the English side. And all of these have a chance at having different types of cards inside. This one has the regular booster packs just like all the other ones that you've seen pretty much. All the cards are going to have shadows on them. Now, this one has multiple locations on the bottom. You can see that. It has the wizard logos. and The weight is correct, but the only difference is it has a green winged Charizard on the side. Now, there are different ones. This one here is a green wing Charizard. It also has logos, but it only has one location on the bottom. Usually this has a decent chance at having shadowless booster packs inside. Much, or at least better than the other one. Usually if it has multiple locations, it does not have a chance. And I haven't seen one personally myself that actually contains shadowless packs with more than one location, although I have heard of it happening. I don't have that variation in my collection if it does exist. You can see right here, it does have the locations. There's the green, gr green wing Charizard. But on the bottom, it only has made in the USA. I've already checked. The way you can check is you can actually push down this little flap right here and you can look on the sides and you can also look at the, the crimps along the top of the booster pack and see what types of booster packs you have inside. Now this next one I got off of PokeRev. It's green winged, logos plus one location exactly like the last one. However, this one actually has shadowless short crimp booster packs. I'm going to show you how you can tell for sure. So. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to pick this up on camera. Maybe you can, maybe you can't, but I'm going to push this in. It's kind of hard to see. But if you can see down in there at the booster pack, right in this area, if it's these regular booster packs, it's going to have that red logo that says Trading Card Game. On the earlier shadowless artwork print runs, that was printed at the bottom, so they will not be present. Another way, and if you determine that they do have the shadowless artwork, you can also look in at the edge. You can kind of see the booster packs in there. Let's see if I can get the focus. And you can see the crimps. This one I have determined by looking off to the side, not seeing that red bar, where PokeRev first determined, because he's the one who bought it, found it, then he traded it in a sale, traded slash sold to me. Um, but these actually have short crimps. So this actually has shadowless artwork booster packs inside, but the crimps are short. And the reason the crimps matter is because short crimped booster packs have a chance at either containing regular shadowless or actual unlimited shadowless booster or cards inside the booster pack. What you want is the long crimp. Now this next booster pack is green winged, no logos, plus one location. If you find a booster box, with, booster box with no logos in one location, it has a very high probability of containing shadowless 
long crimp booster packs inside. But it also has a chance of being counterfeited because without the logos, it's really tough to verify for sure that the booster box inside is indeed real and it hasn't been resealed. Now, I'm not going to pull this one out. I do have a video where I show the long crimps in this, but I'm not going to do it again because every time you do that, you kind of put a little bit more pressure on the outside. They are fairly resilient. But I have a whole other video for that. Basically, we do the exact same thing we just did in the last video. Those crimps on the on the top of the booster pack, they'll actually be long. And that means that the cards inside of the booster packs, as far as we know, as far as we've ever found, are guaranteed to be shadowless. So this booster box contains 36 packs of guaranteed shadowless holographic cards. Now, I bought this booster pack, booster box, off of a Wizards... Uh, employee a while back. It checks out. It's very mint. Nothing about it looks suspicious to me. The weight is correct and all of the outside markings match up with the box itself. So I'm very confident that this one is real. And then last but definitely not least, we have the first edition base set booster box. Now this one, there was a torn one. It torn in two places, sold recently for $198,000 uh, online in I believe it was Heritage Auctions. I was actually one of the first bidders on that box, but I, after I got over 100K, I was like, I'm not bidding on this. But then it went for almost $200,000, and it may have if they had to pay sales tax. Now, for me, uh, I, I opened my booster box because, if you guys remember, I actually had one for the longest time, and then I re-examined it, and I realized that it was most likely resealed. And I opened that up in a video there's another video on my channel. You can probably go to my homepage and find that one. And I was pretty devastated. So this time when I got another box, I decided that I was going to open it up on camera. So what I did was I slit each of the three sides, <clears throat> opened it up, and verified that the contents were indeed first edition booster packs. And this one came off of an employee as well, but I did not know them as well. And then I resealed it back on camera. I dated it. I put the time. I signed it. And so this box has been resealed by me. Now, the only thing that you really need to know about this is because it has all the regular indications of Shadowless, you know, the one location, no logos. You've got the green wing Charizard, but on the front, there's something really obvious. First edition limited printing. And so any base set booster box with that on it has the first edition stamps on the cards as far as we know, unless it was some kind of error. But these are all the variants that I am aware of. I mentioned the few that I'm still looking for if they're out there, if they even possibly exist in a booster box form. And if you have any of those, I would be highly interested in uh, making a deal for that kind of stuff. But I hope that you learned something from checking out this video. It's very difficult to attain all of these booster boxes now, especially with the price. Like I said, I bought my first base set, you know, regular booster box for $100 back in 2008. Now, they're probably worth upwards of thirteen, fourteen thousand dollars $14,000. And it's kind of crazy to think that it's went up that much, but then again, as popular as Pokemon is, only the sky is the limit.